Our selection today is right on King Yahshua. <clears throat> Ride on King Yahshua. Ride on King Yahshua. I was young when I begun. No man can I hinder me. Well, this race is almost done. No man can I hinder me. So ride on, King Yahshua. No man can I hinder me. Ride on, King Yahshua, ride on. King Yahshua rides on a milk white horse. No man can I hinder me. The river Jordan he will cross. No man can I hinder me. So ride on, King Yahshua. No man can I hinder me. Ride on, King Yahshua, ride on. If you want to find your way to Yah, no man can I hinder me. The gospel highway must be trod, no man can I hinder me. So ride on, King Yahshua, no man can I hinder me. Ride on, King Yahshua, ride on. Ride on, King Yahshua. No man can I hinder me. Ride on, King Yahshua. Ride on, no man can I hinder me. Ride, King Yahshua. No man can I hinder me. No man can I hinder. Me. Me. The Oracles of the UCI, 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 7 through 11. But the end of all things is at hand. Be you therefore sober and watch on to prayer. And above all things, have favorite love among yourselves, for love shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man has received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of Elohim. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of Elohim. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which Elohim gives, that Elohim in all things may be glorified through Yahshua HaMashiach, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 29 through chapter 5 and verse 4. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of Elohim, whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be you kind one to another, tender hearted, Forgiven one another, even as Elohim for Yahshua's sake has forgiven you. Be you therefore followers of Elohim, as their children, and walk in love, as the Mashiach also have loved us, and has given himself for us an offering and sacrifice to Elohim for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather given of thanks. 
Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Keep your foot when you go to the house of Elohim, and be more ready to hear, than to give the sacrifice of fools, for they consider not that they do evil. Be not rash with your mouth, and let not your heart be hasty to utter anything before Elohim. For Elohim is in heaven, and you up on earth. Therefore, let your words be few. Exodus chapter 23, verses 20 and 21. Behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. Revelations chapter 3, verses 20 through 22. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcomes will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I have also overcame and am sat down with my father in his throne. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. All right. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Which is peace on Yahweh's holy Sabbath day. Welcome to another holy convocation that Yahweh has enjoined to us uh, here in Stone Mountain, Georgia. Um, we um, um, have to um, uh, remember to praise Yahweh, I Elohim, in all the things that uh, uh, he has um, uh, given unto us. Um, it gets difficult at times to uh, thank him for things that we don't know are good yet. Uh, there are certain things that uh, um, uh, seem bad uh, because we really don't know what's around the corner. Um, then we get around that corner and find out that Yahweh actually prepared us for what was around that corner uh, uh, with some things that we were uh, uh, probably fed up with and did not want to uh, continue in any longer. Uh, we have to uh, uh, still praise Yahweh for those uh, uh, things as well. And today's sermon is entitled The Song of Praise. And we're going to begin today's sermon in Nehemiah chapter 7. Nehemiah chapter 7. Uh, now it is written, I will praise the name of Elohim with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. This also shall please Yahweh better than an ox or a bullock that has horns and hoofs. So the song is more pleasing unto Yahweh than uh, uh, the sacrifice. And our people were completely uh, uh, wrapped up in the things of sacrifices and lo and behold, um, uh, we find that uh, uh, the song of praise is, is more pleasing unto Yahweh our Elohim than the sacrifice. Solomon also wrote, I gathered me also silver and gold and the peculiar treasure of kings and of provinces. I got me men singers and women singers and the delights of the sons of men as musical instruments and that of all sorts. And that is Ecclesiastes chapter 2 and verse 8. Um, one of the reasons I wanted to um, go into that is uh, you, you have um, a lot of people that want to um, separate the women of Israel from um, a lot of the holy things that uh, uh, happened. And you're going to find that as we go back and read these things, that there were men singers and women singers. Now, when it came down to certain holy things, you would only have the men singers that are going to be uh, uh, close to the things of that altar. But our people didn't just sing in the sanctuary. They singing at the gates. They singing all over. When you're talking about the children of Israel coming from all over to keep the Feast of Tabernacles, do you understand that most of that is happening outside? The women are not barred from any of those things. So we, we have to take into consideration that Yahweh has all of these things uh, um, to uh, uh, glorify his great and holy name. One of the other things that um, um, we ended up coming into um, contact with is um, there are certain instruments that are written in the book and you will find, especially the Jewish, um, um, they will say that you cannot glorify Yahweh with any other instrument other than the things that they had at that particular time. And I want you to look at, uh, uh, if we're uh, still on this first graphic, I want you to look at the instruments that are here. Um, when you get to 
uh, uh, first of all, uh, look at on this uh, left side, this harp. Um, if you ever open up a piano, you'll find out that it looks just like that. That it's actually a, a, a button that you're pressing that's hitting that. And when it says stringed instruments, we because we don't see the strings inside of the piano, that we then forget that that is, is strings in there that's striking that, that's making those sounds. Uh, when you look at this timbrel, because understand, one of the things that we love the most, our people, you ever notice you don't see this on here yet. You don't see a drum, and we love a drum. We, 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 we start moving. Anybody's beat stop moving. It just, it's like, wait a minute, what is that? But I can't stop move. Stop it. Stop it. You can't, it, 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 the drum do something for you. Look at the timbrel and look at the tabret and tell me that's not the beginning of a drum. Matter of fact, if you get the ones that the brothers use in the island, it's basically a timbrel with a long wood piece up under it and they beat on it the same way you beat on a tambourine. You find the beginning of a drum. All of these things were then used to praise Yahweh, I Elohim. So uh, uh, um, having one of the Jewish people turn around and, and, and look, and they, they, they had issue because we were telling them that they were using the wrong shofar. And what people do, instead of dealing with what they have done wrong, they want to try to point out something that they think you do wrong rather than dealing with, and eventually he said, well, I know we should be using the shofar, yet he still want to use, you know, the, the, the kadu. Um, but um, his thing was then, you know, you guys are praising Yahweh with instruments that, that, that are not written in the book. Like Yahweh is then limited. You know, we, 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 you read in this book, which one of y'all found an SUV in the book yet? Hmm. So, so we can't go to church in our SUV because it wasn't written in the book. You know, that brother sinned. That brother came here in the SUV. Look at that. Sinful brother. I mean, we, we have to use some common sense with this word at the same time. Okay? What's invented at the time that it is written is what's there. That doesn't mean that Yahweh is limited unto that. Let's begin in Nehemiah chapter 7 and verse 60. Verse 60. All the Nethanims and the children of Slomo servants were 390 and 2. And these were they which went up also from Telmelea, Telherisha, Cherub, Adon, and Immer. But they could not show their father's house nor their seed, whether they were of Israel. The children of Deliah, the children of Tobiah, the children of Nakoda, 640 and 2. And of the priests, the children of Habiah, the children of Kaz, the children of Barzillai, which took one of the daughters of Barzillai the Gileadite to wife, and was called after their name. Right, and this is what the Jewish do, um, say that they are Jewish after their mother, and you cannot find any such thing anywhere in scripture. Um, but they will have no problems telling you that you should not be uh, uh, serving Yahweh with a piano. Go ahead. These sought their register among those that were reckoned by genealogy, but it was not found. Therefore were they, as polluted, put from the priesthood. And the Tershita said unto them that they should not eat of the most holy things, till there stood up a priest with Urim and Thummim. The whole congregation together was forty and two thousand three hundred and three score, beside their manservants and their maidservants, of whom there were seven thousand three hundred thirty and seven, and they had two hundred forty and five singing men and singing women. Right, now you're going to run into some Hebrew Israelites that will have a problem with any women singing amongst uh, uh, the congregation or in anything. Uh, but most of the times, if you keep looking, you're also going to find that these are, are those lone rangers who just sit up in their living room with a webcam and they have a whole lot of stuff to say. Because they're not doing anything. So they can say, you can't do this, you can't do that. They're saying that because they can't do it. Hmm. They, they can't, you know, have women singers because uh, uh, they won't allow it. They can't have women singers because won't no women come there. 
Go ahead, bro. Their horses, 730 and 6. Their mules, 240 and 5. Their camels, 430 and 5. 6,720 asses. And some of the chief of the fathers gave on to the work. The Tirshatha gave to the treasure a thousand drams of gold, 50 basins, 530 pr priest garments. Mm -hmm. Priest garments. So then there are uh, 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 certain things that are holy to be worn for the job of the priesthood. You know, we don't have to look back far for us to find, even in the Christian church, that all the pastors wear robes. It's not that far. You don't have to go that far to, to, to see it. Then all of a sudden the robes disappeared. Go ahead. And some of the chief of the fathers gave to the treasure of the work 20,000 drams of gold and 2,200 pound of silver. And that which the rest of the people gave was 20,000 drams of gold and 2,000 pound of silver and three score and seven priest garments. So the priests and the Levites and the porters and the singers and some of the people and the Nethanims and all Israel dwelt in their cities. And when the seventh month came, the children of Israel were in their cities. And this was the children of Israel returning uh, um, after captivity and they're setting up all of these things and everybody is giving for the cause uh, uh, to set things back uh, in the order that it should have been uh, because our people understood that not doing these things is what sent us into captivity. So then there's a, a, a very strong desire to set things up correctly after you've uh, 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 come out of captivity. Let's go to uh, uh, Second Chronicles chapter 5. Second Chronicles chapter five, and let's start that at verse one. Thus all the work that Slomo made for the house of Yahweh was finished. And Slomo brought in all the things that Dawid his father had dedicated, and the silver and the gold and all the instruments, put he among the treasures of the house of Elohim. Right, so even though uh, uh, Dawid was not allowed to build the house of Yahweh because of all the wars, that he ended up fighting, which made uh, 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 his hands dirty, even though this is something that Yahweh needed him to do. This is the thing that we have to pay attention to. Yahweh needed him to go about and do all of the things to, to unify the children of Israel. But in doing so, the blood that was shed by his hand prevented him from building the holy house. It wasn't a situation of Yahweh being angry with him. It was the job that he had conflicted with another job. You can't build a house with your hands because I used your hands to war. And so I can't use you for the next part of this job. But I am I, I am just thrilled that you would even want to. So because of that, I'm going to deal with you in this, but I can't let you build it. So see, now some of y'all will probably understand when you got ready to shoot somebody and the gun wouldn't go off. See, Yahweh was worrying about your future already. <laughs> and when I say you, I was talking about me. Go ahead, brother. <laughs> Verse 2. And Slomo assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the chief of the fathers of the children of Israel, onto, Ish onto Jerusalem, to bring up the Ark of the Covenant of Yah out of the city of Dawid, which is Zion. Wherefore all the men of Israel assembled themselves onto the king in the feast, which was in the seventh month. Right, you have a lot of things going on in this seventh month. You have all of the children of Israel converging on this place. There's not enough room in all these places to hold Israel. So it makes sense that they would have these booths everywhere. Set up a tent in the street, in the parking lot, everywhere. Because the people are all over the place. You talking about a family reunion? Hmm. We didn't have to have those. We think it's a big deal. We have this big old family reunion. Israel had one every year. What we need a separate family reunion for? 
We got holy days. There go your family reunion. Go ahead. Verse 4. And all the elders of Israel came, and the Levites took up the ark. And they brought up the ark and the tabernacle of the congregation and all the holy vessels that were in the tabernacle. These did the priests and the Levites bring up. Also King Slomo and all the congregation of Israel that were assembled unto him before the ark sacrificed sheep and oxen, which could not be told nor numbered for multitude. Mm -hmm. But remember, it says the song of praise is looked upon even higher unto Yahweh than the sacrifices. And we then use the sacrifices in a lot of times to put ourselves back in the right place uh, 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 with Yahweh. And what ends up happening is when people had money, they just had more animals to sacrifice. Thus, more sins could be done. But when a song was sung, it was sung from the heart, whether there was anything to offer or not. And as it is written, let everything that has a voice praise Yahweh our Elohim. See, we get to that point where we say, well, you know, I can't hit a high note. <laughs> so, you know, I can't really sing for Yahweh. You got a voice, right? When you open your mouth, do something come out? Well, then you can sing for Yahweh then. See, this ain't that thing that you used to seeing on TV where they zoom in on the person. No, 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 no. No, 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 this ain't that. Go ahead, bro. And the priest brought in the Ark of the Covenant of Yah onto his place, to the oracle of the house, into the most holy place, even under the wings of the cherubims, where the cherubims spread forth their wings over the place of the Ark, and the cherubims covered the Ark and the staves thereof above. And they drew out the staves of the Ark, that the ends of the staves were seen from the Ark before the oracle, but they were not seen without. And there it is unto this day. There was nothing in the ark save the two tables which Moshe put therein at Horeb when Yahweh made a covenant with the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt. And it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place for all the priests that were present were sanctified and did not then wait by course. Also the Levites which were the singers, all of them of Asaph, of Heman, of Yedutham, with their sons and their brethren, being arrayed in white linen, mm -hmm. having cymbals and psalteries and harps, stood at the east end of, of the altar, and with them 120 priests sounding with trumpets. So then you, 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 you have a, a whole band, if you will, uh, 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 out of these Levites when it comes down to holy things. So then there's a separation when it comes down to certain things where you're going to see the men singers and the women singers. But when you start talking about the things at the gates and all of those, the women would not be barred from any of those things. But when you talk about these things, here are the sons of Levi who are skilled in song because they're handing down all of these things from generation to generation. You practice in something and you grow up in something, you're going to become proficient at it. Go ahead. It came even to pass, as the trumpeteers and singers were as one, to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking Yahweh. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music, and praised Yahweh, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endures forever, mm -hmm. that then the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of Yah. Okay, okay, back up. All right. Um, it came even to pass, as the trumpeters and the singers were as one. So they are practicing their skill. If they are doing as one, then they are going over and over to make sure that their thing is the best that they can possibly offer unto Yahweh. To make one sound to be heard. If it sounds like one instrument, all the instruments playing together. In praising and thanking Yahweh, when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praise Yahweh, saying, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Now understand what happened. That then the house was filled with the cloud, even the house of Yahweh. Now here come the spirit. See, this is part of what was happening on Sunday morning, what they thought when they were just hollering and screaming and stuff like that. They was like, you know, we're going to bring the spirit. 
Well, there was a little bit of method to that madness, but it, it, it wasn't right. But you can at least understand what they were trying to do. It was after all of these things that then this came in. Go ahead. So that the priest could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud, for the glory of Yahweh had filled the house of Elohim. Right. So then those things were kind of uh, 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 somehow made merchandise of that. Um, 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 after you heard a certain song and beat, all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost always showed up on Sunday morning. Well, they're taking holy things and, and, and taking bits and pieces of them and using them out of context. OK, now, one of the things uh, uh, I need for people to get out of this is we often talk about Lucifer and music and how he controls music. Um, do you understand why? Because it actually means something to Yahweh. But you know what we will do? We will turn around and attribute all musical things to Lucifer. Mm -hmm. Understand, he's only interested in it because Yahweh's interested in it. So now we turn around and back away from it because it seems important unto Lucifer. He only likes what Yahweh likes. And he wants to steal and control the things that Yahweh has held important unto him. Then when you walk away from it, what you just did, you gave it to Lucifer. Then you give him credit for having all these things of music. I hear it all the time that people give the adversary, the devil, credit for these things. This is Yahweh's stuff. He don't get to have that. He going to fight me for that. That belongs to my Elohim. I ain't just giving that up. Let's go to uh, uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 7. Go ahead, brother. You know what we don't realize also is, I mean, he has front row seat to understand what Yahweh likes and doesn't like. He's been there watching and covering the seat. Uh huh. So he can say, oh, man, that instrument that made him tap his feet. Mm -hmm. What? I need to control that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, even when we looked at that picture, there was another thing on there where it says, you know, the sack butt. Mm -hmm. which is basically a, a, a trombone looking thing. But if you look at the trumpet, you can see how that was born out of the trumpet. But you don't find that right away. You find that later on when we read about Daniel, then we find the sack butt. People will say, well, wait a minute. They're playing the trombone there. That's the devil there. Hmm. See, because see now that they, they're trying to worship something evil right there. So we don't need to listen to that instrument right there. Man, that's just a trumpet with a curve on it. Now we're not going to listen to that. It's, it's that thing, man, that we allow evil to do because we know of some evil things that happen at some people's birthdays. You got a lot of people that walk around that won't celebrate birthdays because Lucifer did some evil at it. Sin is defined as the transgression of the law. I don't care what somebody does evil with something. Somebody just hit somebody with a car that you drive. Did that stop you from driving your car? <laughs> I ain't driving that car no more. Somebody died in that car yesterday. Right. As soon as it's time to leave, watch them get in that car. Right. Don't let people stop you from doing Because let me tell you something. The adversary slick. He'll turn around and put invisible chains on you, and you won't go and deal with any of those things because you have a mindset to believe that those things would not be allowed by Yahweh. Like, like Brother Kish said, he's sitting there watching. He knows all of the things and what they do. He said, oh, I'm going to definitely control them with this. Mm -hmm. And if you don't think the music has uh, any relevance, all we have to do is look down at the speedometer when your favorite song come on. Watch and see that you just didn't go 10 miles uh, over uh, uh, faster than you was before. And see, now we got them smart cars. See, I, you know, I had a hoop there, so, you know, this is a dumb car. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> dumb car don't tell you nothing. But them smart cars, you, you get the... <laughs> beep, 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 beep. You're like, what is this thing beeping for? That's because you just passed the speed limit, bro. So that ought to be easy for some of y'all to tell. 
Y'all got some fine automobiles. All y'all that drive hoopties like me, you're not going to be able to figure that out. You just got to look down and see, man, I'm going 90. Go ahead, bro. Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 1. Now when Slomo had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of Yahweh filled the house. And the priest could not enter into the house of Yahweh, because the glory of Yahweh had filled Yahweh's house. And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down, and the glory of Yahweh upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement, and worshipped, and praised Yahweh, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Mm -hmm. Then the king and all the people offered sacrifices before Yahweh. And King Slomo offered a sacrifice of twenty and two thousand oxen, and an hundred and twenty thousand sheep, to the king and all the people. So the king, pardon me, and all the people dedicated the house of Elohim. Now, um, let me tell you something. If we were doing sacrifices up at this point, the whole power structure of the earth would come against us. They have like many people upon the earth that they are, you know, saying are are hungry and all of these things. And, 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 and if our people would be sacrificing uh, 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 animals at this point, let me tell you something, they would definitely be trying to kill us off. I can tell you that now. Why do you think you got people in, 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 they have all of these people in Asia, right? Why do you think they eating all these animals that, that ain't on the clean list? They have so many people Think about if they had clean and unclean and they said, all right, we can only eat certain animals. They're going to starve because there's so many of them. So they eat anything and will mix anything. How many of y'all seen that video that uh, Mother Leia sent out about the gutter oil? Mm. Was that not one of the most disgusting things you've ever seen in your life? How they, they making oil that they going to cook out of, out of sewage. And we'd be like, mm, that rice was delicious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a little bit of gutter in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Go ahead, bro. Verse 6. And the priests waited on their offices. The Levites also with instruments of music of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Which Dawid the king had made to praise Yahweh. Dawid the king had made instruments to praise Yahweh. Uh, uh, and, and, and you understand the power of this music. Lucifer understood it from the beginning. So it's not a coincidence that our music has all of a sudden become Jewish control and everything is murder, death, kill. You ain't getting a record, uh, a contract unless you kill at least two people and have sex with four women before the first uh, verse. They counting the how many times you're fornicating this song. One, two, you gotta fornicate at least two more times and we're not putting it on there. And in turn, when they make those uh, 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 demands, that's what our people turn around and do. Early forms of hip hop, all those dudes had at least uh, one or two years in college. Now look at your average rapper. He got at least one or two years in high school. Totally different. Different kind of different kind of subject matter. But who's in control of that? Get the album, turn it over. Look at all your stings on there. Just look for the Epstein's and the Stings and the Steins. Oh, you say, okay, I see who in control of this. So that means as hood as that brother looks, he had to stand before a little Jewish white man and proclaim how foul he can be before they said, we're going to give you a million dollar contract. Consider that. But when we see it, all we see is us. You got to flip that album cover over and look at those names. These are the people that said, this is what I want you to do. And what do you think that said for the next brother? He tries to put some righteous song out, it won't even play. But then when he do something foul, all of a sudden, it's on the radio. Right. 
Go ahead. You know, as we read about Dawid, you look at the contribution that Dawid made to the priesthood as well as to the kingship. Uh huh. Before they're even coming together. Mm -hmm. Because here he is, he's making instruments mm -hmm. that's going to be used by the priest. Right. In praise of Yahweh, but he's a king and the two houses are separate. Right. And then also, who best to understand instruments but a player of instruments? Right. He knows the power of the music, the same music that soothed the evil spirit that came upon Saul. Get out of my class, bro. <laughs> You know, see that what happens when you let somebody do Bible study. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying they just get all up in your stuff, bro. Right? Man, it's just disrespect. Damn, respectful is what it is. I just playing. Go ahead, bro. <laughs> <laughs> because his mercy endures forever. When Dawid prays by their ministry, and the priests sounded trumpets before them, and all Israel stood. Moreover, Slomo hollowed the middle of the court that was before the house of Yah. For there he offered burnt offerings and the fat of the peace offerings, because the brazen altar which Slomo had made was not able to receive the burnt offerings and the meat offerings and the fat. Also at the same time, Slomo kept the feast seven days, and all Israel with him, a very great congregation, from the entering in of Hamath onto the river of Egypt. And in the eighth day they made a solemn assembly, for they kept the dedication of the altar seven days, and the feast seven days. And on the three and twentieth day of the seventh month. On the three and twentieth day of the seventh month. There's a whole lot of things that go down in the seventh month. Uh, um, this is why you know, just a whole lot of these things. The so-called family reunions and stuff. We are not going to have any need for something like that. We don't have a need for that. This is the whole family of Israel coming together. What we need a family reunion for? We don't need nobody to print up no shirt. <laughs> Johnson. Who that? We don't need those. Go ahead. And on the three and twentieth day of the seventh month, he sent the people away into their tents, glad and merry in heart for the goodness that Yahweh had showed unto Dawid and to Slomo and to Israel, his people. Thus Slomo finished the house of Yahweh and the king's house and all that came into Slomo's heart to make in the house of Yah, and in his own house he prosperously effected. And Yahweh appeared to Slomo by night, and said unto him, I have heard your prayer, and have chosen this place to myself for an house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, mm -hmm. then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be open, and mine ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. Right. So then there is a difference made between the prayer that was offered there and the prayer that was offered in someone's private home. So they had to make an attempt to get out of their house and get to this place and pray. They could have, could have prayed the same thing at the house. But they said, well, you know what? But I'm going to pray that prayer there. Go ahead. For now, for now have I chosen and sanctified this house that my name be, may be there forever and mine eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. And as for you, if you will walk before me as Dawid your father walked, and do according to all that I have commanded you, and shall observe my statutes and my judgments, then will I establish the throne of your kingdom, according as I have covenanted with Dawid your father, saying, There shall not fail you a man to be ruler in Israel. Right, and all he had to do was follow those uh, 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 instructions, and uh, uh, all of those things he would have been able to take a part in a covenant that was not uh, uh, even made with him. He would have been able to take part in a covenant that was made uh, before him. But he would have been able to walk in the covenant like he was Dawi himself. Uh, let's go to 2 Samuel chapter 6.
Second Samuel chapter 6 and verse 1. Again, that we gathered together all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. And Dawid arose and went with all the people that were with him from Baal of Yehuda to bring up from thence the Ark of Elohim, whose name is called by the name of Yahweh of hosts that dwelleth between the cherubims. And they set the Ark of Elohim upon a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab that was in Gibeah. And Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, drave the new cart. And they brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was at Gibeah, accompanying the Ark of Elohim, and Ahio went before the ark. And Dawid and all the house of Israel played before Yahweh on all manner of instruments made of fir wood, even on harps, and on psalteries, and on timbrels, and on cornets, and on cymbals. And Dawid and all the house of Israel played before Yahweh on all manner of instruments made of fir wood, even on harps, and on psalteries, and on timbrels, and on coronets, and on cymbals. So he has produced a holy band to bring this ark home. Now the problem is he's focusing on the musical part of bringing the ark home and forgot to pay attention to the instructions of how the ark was supposed to move. The people who had it before had it on a cart. He has left it on the cart. He's focusing on the musical side of it. So he's praising Yahweh. This is why you can't get so enveloped in the song and then forget about the instructions. They go hand in hand. So yes, as we read before, they, 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 they brought forth the music, they brought forth the song, and then the spirit of Yahweh came into the place. Okay? But now he has all the musical instruments. He's doing all of this. He's bringing it with song. But there's a problem with the instruction now. Go ahead. Isn't that what most of us do? We get caught up in the beat and not listening to the words. <laughs> right. The whole song saying, I worship the devil. I worship the devil. And we like, ew, what is been? Worship the devil. Hold on, bro. Bro, did you hear what you just said? No, I was I was just bouncing to the beat. You just said you worship the devil. <laughs> did I? I didn't even hear myself say it. Right. Something wrong with that. Go ahead. And when they came to Nacon's threshing floor, Uzzah put forth his hand to the ark of Elohim and took hold of it, for the oxen shook it. And the anger of Yahweh was kindled against Uzzah, and Elohim smote him there for his error. And Yahweh smote him there. The angel of Yahweh smote him. The one who committed the trespass in touching the holy seat of Yahweh had to die. Right away. But we go back to the word and we find that all the way through it. So now we see th this is where we have to understand that there has to be a balance in the things that we're going to do. Dawid has focused so much on this musical part of bringing the ark home. He has forgotten the first rule and how the ark is supposed to move. The Levites are supposed to move it. So this gives us an, an, an indication where we can't be one-sided servants. You can't go all the way away from the song, but you can't be so far in the song that you don't remember any instructions. Go ahead. And there he died by the Ark of Elohim. Mm -hmm. And Dawid was displeased because Yahweh had made a breach upon Uzzah, and he called the name of that place Perez Uzzah to this day. And Dawid was afraid of Yahweh that day and said, How shall the Ark of Yahweh come to me? Uh huh. So Dawid would not remove the Ark of Yahweh onto him into the city of Dawid. But Dawid carried it aside into the house of Obed-Edom Obed the Gittite. And the Ark of Yahweh continued in the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite three months. And Yahweh blessed Obed-Edom and all his household. Now, you got to understand how, 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 how confusing this has to be. Um, Yahweh kills a man because he accidentally touches it. And Dawid is afraid, allows it to go somewhere else. And then it blesses the house of the people that... You know, it stays in. Yeah, but dude just got killed with me trying to move it. But then you bless the people where I leave it? See, this is that point where we want somebody to float down and talk to us. 
Oh, oh, Dawid, what you should have done. No, man, you got instructions. Now go back to your instructions and figure out what you did wrong. This is why we scour the internet listening to everybody. And y'all ain't going to let you scour. Go right ahead. Your instructions on page 482. And I'm going to sit right here until you find it. And until you fix it, I ain't changing jack. Go ahead. And it was told King Dawid, saying, Yahweh has blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that pertaineth unto him because of the Ark of Elohim. So Dawid went and brought up the Ark of Elohim from the house of Obed-Edom into the city of Dawid with gladness. And it was so that when they that bear the Ark of Yahweh had gone six paces, he sacrificed oxen and fatlings. Now, he's doing something different than what he did before. See, the one thing my mama used to tell me growing up, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting a different result. Uh, you already tried this, right? Okay, what happened when you tried it? I ended up all alone by myself. <laughs> all right, and that's exactly what's going to happen next week. You understand? So we got to try something different than what we did the week before. Go ahead. And that we danced before Yahweh with all his might. And Dawid was girded with a linen ephod. That's, that we don't remember reading that before. So he said, look here, I'm, I'm going to put every, all my power into this. I'm going to boogie boogie. All right? See, we, 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 we gonna, we, I'm, I'm bringing the music. We gonna, we gonna, I'm, I'm going to dance. And we got sacrifices. I'm bringing this thing home. Go ahead. So Dawid and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of Yahweh with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. Uh huh. And as the ark of Yahweh came into the city of Dawid, Michal, Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw King Dawid leaping and dancing before Yahweh, and she despised him in her heart. So now you got his wife despising him because now it looked like he's dealing with some vanity. But in one of those changes, he has the Levites carrying the ark the way it should have been, but he's going all out. Consider, a man died the last time he did this. A man died the last time he did this. How can he not offer his all? How can he come to Yahweh half cock? And it's a dead man laying on his conscience. But that ain't what she see. What she sees. Look at this vanity. Look at this. He just gonna right there. He gonna twerk something for Yahweh. <laughs> Hope he die right there by that all. By that all. See, it's different when the dead man sitting on your conscience. Go ahead. And they brought in the ark of Yahweh and set it in his place, in the midst of the tabernacle that Dawid had pitched for it. And that we'd offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before Yah. So he got it to get to the place. He wasn't able to get there. He got further than he was able to get before. He didn't stop. See, some people, that would have been the end. Once somebody died, that's it. The ark going to be right there in that place forever. Hmm. We do that now. We can do something and we sit a bucket in the floor because the ceiling leaked. Three months later, that bucket will be still right there. It ain't rained in two months. The bucket will still be right there. They be like, hey, man, move this bucket. No, no, man. So I put that bucket there. We're going to sit that bucket right there. Bro, he set the bucket there because it was raining. Bro, it's not raining. Why is the bucket still sitting there? Go ahead. Verse 18. And as soon as Dawid had made an end of offering burnt offerings and peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of Yahweh of hosts. And he dealt, he dealt among all the people, even among the whole multitude of Israel, as well to the women as men, to everyone a cake of bread, and a good piece of flesh, and a flagon of wine. So all the people departed, everyone to his house. And he dealt among all the people, even among the whole multitude of Israel, as well to the women as men. He made sure that everybody enjoyed the returning of this holy article unto Israel. Go ahead. Then Dawid returned to bless his household. And Michal, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet Dawid. 
and said, how glorious was the king of Israel today. Ah, uh, now, now she's looking down at her nose at him. Now he has brought home the ark of Elohim. He has helped everybody. He made sure that everybody felt glorious about it. Departing all of these things unto all of the people of Israel. And then he go home. Yahweh is pleased with him. The children of Israel is pleased with him. And then he go home. Go ahead, bro. This is the daughter of Saul. This is the daughter of Saul. And Saul we go. Saul was trying to kill him Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And we're going to get there. Yeah. We're going to get there. See? We're going to get there. Go ahead, bro. Who uncovered himself today in the eyes of the handmaids of his of his servants? Right, it's just that, that you know, Dawi danced and pulled off his shirt, and she's all, oh, "You trying? Look at that! You trying to get some some more women? Look at you! Look at you! You trying to show your muscles?" <laughs> this all she see. See, the carnal can only see carnal things. They can't see spiritual things, no matter what you do. They're gonna see the carnality part of it. And this is all that she was able to see. And this man is doing this to the best of his ability because he knows a man died the last time. Go ahead. But didn't her father also have a problem with the women singing songs to him? Yes, <laughs> yes. But see, the power song is, is a power song and glorify you and get you killed. Go ahead, bro. As one of the vain fellows shamefully uncovers himself. Mm-hmm. Look, look, look at the words that, that, that comes to the man who just brought the ark to the children of Israel. Now he must be one of the vain fellows. And he is successful, by the way, in moving this thing. And he knows how serious it was. Consider if you're doing a job that you know the last time you did it, somebody got killed. You don't know if the next one's going to be you. If you go back in that job after somebody done died and you still don't pay attention, you got to be one of the, 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 the dumbest people around. After somebody done died on my job, I'm watching everything. Huh? <laughs> They're like, look, I need you to screw this screw in that wall. I'm going to look at that wall about eight times before I... <laughs> Hey, bro, what you looking for? Hey, man, that dude died. I, I ain't trying to hear you, nothing you saying. For I screw that screw in that wall, I'm looking at that wall, I'm examining every bit of that screw. Hey, man, last dude died here, man. I can't half do this. Go ahead. But you know the sad thing about it is, here he's enjoying this moment. Mm -hmm. He's celebrating. Mm -hmm. He's blessed this trial. Mm -hmm. He's now going to bless his own house, and before he can get in the house, she meets him outside. Yeah, yeah. So, what did she do in doing so? Trying to kill his spirit. Ah, 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 ah. She makes sure that he does not bless her. Listen deeper. Listen deeper. I need you to get on that second level. <laughs> Go ahead, bro. I don't want to be in your class. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be in it anyway. <laughs> Go ahead, bro. Verse 21. And Dawid said unto Michael, It was before Yahweh, which choose me before your father and before all his house, to point me ruler over the people of Yahweh over Israel. Therefore will I play before Yahweh. So he didn't have the answer to the priest or anything, but he got the answer to the wife of his bosom when he get to the house. All this stuff that done happened before Yahweh, but I got an answer to you. And he's having to explain himself. And because she met him, he has not blessed this house. Now consider what's going to not happen later on. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. He did not get an opportunity to bless the house. Why? Because her mouth running. While you dying, you gonna twerk for you gonna twerk for <laughs> here go some dollars. <laughs> right. Go ahead, bro. 
No, I just wanted to say that 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 sounds like a divided house. Divided in the worst way. She came out to meet him. Mm -hmm. You know how much was in her heart, bro? She couldn't even wait till he got in. He coming in the house. He on his way to bless the house. But that demonic spirit that's sitting in her wouldn't allow her uh, uh, to even wait long enough for him to get in the house. But this is how Yahweh does when he makes sure that somebody brings judgment upon themselves. She's bringing judgment on herself and don't even know it. Dawid ain't a perfect man. He is, he has done sins. We'll, we, we, we can read about his sin. But being blessed of Yahweh is not contingent upon a person being perfect. And that seems to confuse the children of Israel. Go ahead. And I'll yet be more vile than dust, and will be based in mine own sight. And of the maidservants which you have spoken of, uh -huh. of them shall I be had in honor. They will honor me. The ones that you saying I'm looking vain in front of, they are going to honor me because of the things that I have done for Yahweh my Elohim. But it says a prophet is not without honor, save in his own house, in his own family, among his own people. Go ahead. Therefore, the Michal, the daughter of Saul, had no child unto the day of her death. Right. All she had to do was keep her mouth closed. But she couldn't do that. That just wasn't in her to keep her mouth closed. He is on his way. The man has the power of Yahweh and the blood. He just moved the ark. Do you understand the power that is on him right now? Nobody has the power to retain the spirit. But the spirit is with him. At this moment. And she stops him from blessing her. She ain't never going to get that opportunity again. That's gone, boo-boo. These not the kind you get back. Ain't no do-overs when it comes to the spirit. You can't tell the spirit, you know what, I, I didn't feel like dealing with you at that time. Could you come back on Thursday? Hmm. You playing, right? You, are, you, are, you, are you serious right now? The ark has been moved. The, 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 the spirit of Yahweh is with this man. And you let this come out of your mouth? And he's on his way to bless the house. See, this is that thing about having reverence for something. Had there been some reverence of her husband? Those words when it came out of her mouth. Let's go to our, 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 our first Samuel chapter 18. <clears throat> Sometimes events happen that we can't get away from and they cause the root of bitterness. First Samuel chapter 18. And let's start that at verse 17. And Saul said to Dawid, Behold my elder daughter Mirab. Now, brother, you was talking about uh, uh, Saul's daughter, Michal. I understand. That ain't the one he was supposed to have. He was supposed to have Mirab first. And oftentimes we forget that. Now, now, now look at how this snare ends up uh, 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 taking place. Go ahead. Her will I give you to wife. Only be you valiant for me and fight for Yahweh's battles. For Saul said... Let not mine hand be upon him, but let the hand of the Philistines be upon him. Right. So Saul is then going to use his, his oldest daughter as a snare unto Dawid. Go ahead. And Dawid said unto Saul, Who am I? And what is my life or my father's family in Israel, that I should be son-in-law to the king? But it came to pass at the time when Mirab, Saul's daughter, should have been given to Dawid, that she was given unto Adriel, the Maholathite, to wife. Now, so you, you, you already have a situation that's problematic. He promises him one daughter, then turn around and gives that daughter to somebody else. So I has some serious issues. Go ahead. And Michael, Saul's daughter, loved Dawid. And they told Saul, and the thing pleased him. Right. If you go back to the story of, of, of Yaakov and the, the, the prophecies of Leah and Rachel, 
you're going to start to see the reverse part of Dawid. And this is the one who's putting Israel together. Israel is not put together before him. Yet he's going through some of those very same things. Go ahead. And Saul said, I will give him her that she may be a snare to him. I will give him her that she may be a snare to him. So this is the one who uh, couldn't keep her mouth closed. And she was given for a snare at the beginning. Go ahead. And that the hand of the Philistines may be against him. Wherefore Saul said to Dawid, You shall this day be my son-in-law in the one of the two. And Saul commanded his servant, saying, Commune with Dawid secretly and say, Behold, the king has delight in you, and all his servants love you. Now therefore be the king's son-in-law. Now, and Saul commanded his servants, saying, Commune with Dawid secretly. Why? See, the people don't need to know how I plan on him dying. So they will think that it's just a regular military campaign. But go to him secretly and say, I want you to do this, and then I'll give you this other daughter to wife. See, folks stay up all night being slick, not understanding. Y'all always slicker than that. So while you staying up all night trying to figure out how you getting over on something, Yahweh putting water right on top of that oil. You know, you won't be slick. You won't be real slick today. <laughs> I'm going to show you some real slipperiness. Go ahead. And Saul's servant spake those words in the ears of Dawid. And Dawid said, Seem it to you a light thing to be a king's son-in-law, seeing that I am a poor man and lightly esteemed? And the servants of Saul told him, saying, On this manner spake Dawid. And Saul said, Thus shall you say to Dawid, The king desires not any dowry, uh -huh. but an hundred foreskins of the Philistines, to be avenged of the king's enemies. The king desires not any dowry, because he says I'm a poor man. You know, you can't just show up to a man's house talking about I'm in love with your daughter. Well, that's the congratulation for my daughter virgin. Where you goats? Where you oxen? Where you cattle? Surely you got something to offer. He's been like, I'm poor, man. I ain't got nothing. That's all right. I got something for you to do. That I may be avenged of my enemies. But this is a secret military campaign. Go ahead. But Saul thought to make Dawid fall by the hand of the Philistines. Right. He gave him a job that he thought was impossible. Okay. He gave him a job that he did not believe he should be able to accomplish. Go ahead. And when his servants told Dawid these words, it pleased Dawid well to be the king's son-in-law, and the days were not expired. Wherefore Dawid arose and went, he and his men, and slew of the Philistine two hundred men. And Dawid brought their foreskins, and they gave them in full tale to the king, that he might be the king's son-in-law. And Saul gave him Michal, his daughter, to wife. Now, you got to understand how foul this job is. <laughs> he was supposed to get one hundred, he killed two, because you can't count the number you're going to kill. You know what I'm saying? You got to kill whatever in the battle. All right. So he killed 200. Now, somebody job to go. <sighs> somebody on PP duty, okay? Somebody got to go and cut all the foreskins off and hand those back. If we had to draw straws for that job, I'd say, boy, just got a money. Man, come on, somebody got to take that job. Yeah, bro, I can't, I can't, I didn't. First of all, all these dudes dead. All right? So somebody got to be playing around with dead bodies anyway. Oh, man, this, 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 boy. This, this ugly, this ugly job right here. No, you see, Dawid, he said, you got to bring him back, not me. <laughs> you this, 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 this is, um. Yeah, this is not this is not pretty. But Yahweh gave him double fold. Oh boy put him on a tail of a hundred. Mm -hmm. Then Yahweh gives Dawid two hundred. Now Yahweh is real good at point making. See? The things that other people will do to try and kill you, Yahweh will turn around and make that very thing. The thing of power and strength for you, if you let him.
go ahead. And Saul saw and knew that Yahweh was with Dawid. Uh huh. Right? He know after that. See, <laughs> here it is. Think about the point. <clears throat> excuse me, that Yahweh is making. He tries to get him killed with a hundred foreskins. Yahweh turned around to get a man two hundred. You know how, what that just did to Saul? Who had? He just knew he gonna get him killed with the one hundred. Cause the Philistines ain't no regular people, man. These, these African giants, man. Stu's mm -hmm. got six fingers, man. Stu's got like six toes, bro. These dudes got like, you know, we got that like that one little strip in the sandal. They got two. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got that one strip by the, by the big toe. You know what I'm talking about? You got that one strip by the big toe. They got more than one strip. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, these dudes are something to be scared of. He don't get 100, he get two. He for surely thought he was going to get killed. Them some sandals I ain't going to buy right now. I see two of them straps. Like, man, right, them, some, them some Philistine sandals, brother. I ain't getting no. Where we at, brother? Did we finish that? And that Michael, Saul's daughter, loved him. And Saul was yet the more afraid of Dawid, and Saul became Dawid's enemy continually. Uh-huh. Now let's go to our, our, our first Samuel chapter 25. He now knows for a fact, but you, you, you have to pay attention. He now knows that Yahweh is with Dawid because he tried to kill him and he wouldn't die. You have to understand that sometimes this is how Yahweh shows that he's with you. He gonna let one of your enemies come at you. While you're saying, okay, Yahweh should protect me. He is protecting you. But he going to let your enemy come for you. Because he need to show your enemy that he with you. No, 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 no. I'm going to let them swing their best swing. And you're not going to even know they hit you. See, that? that's, that's that part of, of the, the mental game of martial arts. When you knock the fire out of somebody. And they teach him to just sit there, act like they wouldn't hit. Bow! Now, he hurt like hell now, all right? But the mental game <laughs> is to act like he didn't even feel that punch, you know? And that'll mess with your mental. Is that all you got? You know, that, that's how Bruce Lee would, would use to mess with your head. You hit like a woman. Ah oh, man. He's like, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I gave him the best I had. <laughs> and he just coughed at it. I mean, when you hit somebody with the best you got, pow! And they go, <clears throat> That's it? Oh, this ain't about to look good for you. Mm -hmm. Well, Yahweh do the same thing. See? He gonna let your enemy hit you. He gonna let your enemy do his best. But he's going to take care of that business. Go ahead, bro. 1 Samuel chapter 25 and verse 42. And Abigail hasted and arose and rode upon an ass with five damsels of hers that went after her. Mm -hmm. And she went after the messengers of Dawid and became his wife. Dawid also took a high of, of Yezreel, and they were also both of them his wives. But Saul had given Michael his daughter, Dawid's wife, uh -huh. the Faltii, the son of Laish, which was of Galem. So when you start thinking about the, the, the situation of why Michal was so damaged, you have to then consider that as she had to, uh, 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 as Dawid had to run away from Saul, Saul then gives her away. Now he'd already given the first daughter away. Then he gives them the second daughter. Then after Dawid has to run for his life against uh, away from Saul, Saul then gives that woman away to another man. So now that woman then comes back. Let's go to 2 Samuel chapter 3. Second Samuel chapter 3 and let's read verses 1 through 16. 
Verse 1. Now there was long war between the house of Saul and the house of Dawid. But Dawid waxed stronger and stronger, and the house of Saul waxed weaker and weaker. Right, and Dawid had opportunity to kill Saul. As many times as Saul has tried to kill Dawid, he still would not put his hand on an anointed servant of Yahweh. See, people say a murder is a murder. Kill is a kill. No, 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 no. No, that's, that's not so. Because Dawid did some evil. But he knew he wasn't going to put his hand on somebody who was anointed by Yahweh. He knew the difference. I'm not touching him. Yahweh going to have to do that. No matter how long it takes, Yahweh going to have to touch that man. I am not touching that man. We don't really understand. Learn some instructions here. There's certain things that you, no, no, I'm not doing that. Go ahead. And on to Dawid were sons born in Hebron. And his firstborn was Amnon, and Ahinom of Ahinom the Yezreelitess. And his second, Chelub of Ab Abigail, the wife of Nabal the Carmelite. And the third, Absalom, the son of Maacah, the daughter of Talmai, king of Geshur. And the fourth, Adana, Ad Adaniah, the son of Haggith. The fifth, Shephatiah, the son of Abital. And the sixth, Ithream by Egla, Dawid's wife. These were born to Dawid in Hebron. So you have all of these sons that are already there. So when you talk about the, the, the right of the firstborn and all of those things, you, you, you have to consider some things here. All right, firstborn was Amnon. Go ahead. And it came to pass while there was yet, and it came to pass while there was war between the house of Saul and the house of Dawid, that Abner made himself strong for the house of Saul. And Saul had a concubine whose name was Rizpha, the daughter of Ahio, and of Ishbosheth. And Ishbosheth said to Abner, Wherefore has you gone in unto my master's concubine? Then was Abner very angry for the words of Ishbosheth, and said, Am I a dog's head, which against Yehuda do show kindness this day unto the house of Saul, your, fa your father, to his brethren? And to his friends, and have not delivered you into the hand of Dawid, that you charge me today with a fault concerning this woman? So do Elohim to Abner, and more also, except as Yahweh has sworn to Dawid, even so I do to him. To translate the kingdom from the house of Saul, and to set up the throne of Dawid over Israel and over Yehuda, from Dan even to Beersheba. Now, uh, verse 9 So do Elohim to Abner, and more also. Except as Yahweh has sworn to Dawid, even so I do to him. He already known and it was given unto Dawid to run the kingdom. Oh boy, once again, somebody run their mouth. And now he is now backed up and he going to let the kingdom come unto Dawid. He already knew that it was given unto Dawid. He understand that he is just going through the motions of fighting uh, 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 a losing battle. It is the words of somebody else's mouth that causes all of this to come to Dawid. But he didn't say, I think that Dawid is going to have the kingdom. No, 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 no. Let it be done as Yahweh has said unto him. Wait a minute, you know that? So why the hell you been fighting on the other side all this time? Well, we something else. Hmm. Well, we something else. Understand this Israel. Now, no, 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 this your folks. While we doing our little pet rally, our Israelite pet rally, no, this is us. We'll fight on the losing side for two, three years. Pride. You, you do know. So you, you knew that that was going to be given to that way? Boy, we something else. Go ahead, brother. Even the harlot had enough sense to change sides when she knew, right? Yeah, you got it. <laughs> you got it. Go ahead, brother. And he could not answer Abner a word again because he feared him. And Abner sent messengers to Dawid on his, on his behalf. Check this out. He could not answer him a word because he feared him. He ran off at the mouth to a accomplished soldier slash general. You see what them feelings make you do? 
feelings make you run off at the mouth in a fight that you know you can't win. That's a killer right there, bro. You just ran off at the mouth to a killer? That's what we do. Emotions make you run off at the mouth, and then you think later, oh, damn, <laughs> I can't win this. That's a killer, bro. You know how many wars this man done fought, and you running up to him? Then he thought about it afterwards. That's us. Talk first, think later. Think about afterwards that he done ran off at the mouth to a killer. Whoa. Uh. My bad. No, nah, bro. No, 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 no. Don't we going to have a kingdom now because of your mouth. Now your daddy gone now. He ain't even got no real loyalty to you. But you still running off at the mouth. Go ahead. And Abner sent messengers to Dawid on his behalf, saying, Whose is the land? Saying also, Make your league with me, and behold, my hand shall be with you to bring about all Israel unto you. And he said, Well, I'll make a league with you. But one thing I require of you, that is, you shall not see my face, except you first bring Michael, Saul's daughter, when you cometh to see my face. Now, you understand how deep the snare was with this woman. Okay? Go ahead. And Dawid sent messengers to Ishbosheth, Saul's son, saying, Deliver me my wife Michael, which I espoused to me for an hundred foreskins of the Philistines. And Ishbosheth sent and took her from her husband, even from Felatiel, the son of Laish. Now, she might have been happy in her new house with her, with, with her new man. Now, here she getting snatched out of the house. So you understand some of the levels of this bitterness for the woman that was given to him as a snare anyway. Okay? She was happy in this house. Didn't, didn't, didn't tell us that she was unhappy in the house. She was snatched out of the house. Keep reading. And her husband went with her, uh -huh. along weeping behind her to bear her in. Right. He crying following this woman. Because all he know, one day they showed up, you need to go. What, where am I going? Back to your husband. You know, he's still living, you know. And you didn't have no rightful causes. So I tell people, make sure you cover all your bases. Cross all your T's and dot all your I's when it come down to taking care of some business. Now, he didn't take off running because it was something he wanted to do. He, well, he wasn't no night walker. All right? He had to leave because his life was in danger. By the very father of the woman that he married. And consider, this was the hardest woman for him to get out of every wife he had. Hmm. He ain't had to go to war for nobody else. Tell no man, uh-uh, bring me that woman I had to go kill all them Philistines, and we had to go and, 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 <laughs> and, and uh, you, know, you know what I'm talking about. You know, we had to go and do all that. No, man, bring her here. Don't come, don't come without her. Go ahead. Then said Abner unto him, go, return. And he returned. Right. See, they, they scared it. They, they know they, hey, that's a killer. When the killer said, hey, you, you, you see, each time he say something, you notice everybody be like, hey, bro, what? Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> you, you notice that, right? I'm talking about the king. Hey, man, why you going to my, my father's concubine? What? Never mind. <laughs> right? Go ahead. That was it. Verse that was it. All right, let's go to our, our, our second Samuel chapter 12. And then you, 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 when, you, when you look at <clears throat> all of these things, we can see a glimpse of all of the things that Jacob went through dealing with Leah and Rachel, which was also a foreshadowing of the children of Israel and all of the things that we would uh, 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 then encounter. Second Samuel chapter, uh, where are we going? 12. <clears throat> Start that at verse 1. And Yahweh sent Nathan unto Dawid, and he came unto him and said unto him, There were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. 
The rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing, save one little ewe lamb, which he had bought and nourished up, and it grew up together with him and with his children. It did eat of his own meat, and drank of his own cup, and lay in his bosom, and was on to him as a daughter. And there came a traveler unto the rich man, and he spared to take of his own flock and of his own herd, to dress for the wayfaring man that was come on to him, but took the poor man's lamb, and dressed it for the man that was come to him. Now, the king was supposed to make a copy out of the law and read out of it every day. So um, when you get to a, 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 a vague situation such as this, Dawid then understands very easily what is supposed to happen according to the law. Where it gets cloudy with us is when we are in the scenario. So this prophet has enough sense to give a very vague situation that does not include names. This is where we get uh, unjust judgment because people deal with things in a gossip type format. They run and talking about this person in this, this situation and it's already some respect the persons already in it, either for the person or against the person because you now know the individual. Nathan took all of that out because he ain't mentioned nobody's name. And he didn't mention a specific situation. Learn from that. So when somebody come up running up gossiping, ah, uh -uh, take the names out of this story. Because I don't need to be thinking about who name it is. Just tell me what the situation is, and then I can tell you what thus says Yahweh. But see, when it's got names in it, some of us have a problem dealing. Either we got animosity for or animosity against. Go ahead. Dawid's anger was greatly kindled against the man. And he said to Nathan, as Yahweh lives, the man that has done these things shall surely die. Right. He is angered against the man because he don't know who the man is. Go ahead. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. So says the law. He's not just grabbing this out of his out of the air. All right, go ahead. And Nathan said to Dawid, you are the man. Uh-huh. Thus says Yahweh Elohim of Israel, I anointed you king over Israel. Now he's explaining to him how the scenario fits him. This is not just a story. This is telling us how to, to, to get righteous judgment. See, we would have done that the complete opposite. We going in the first part. We done told the name. All right. Keisha came over to John house, all right? And then John did, he did such and such, and then what you think? <laughs> and then we wonder why we didn't get the right situation. Because you went in the wrong order. What you think this was written for? You think Yahweh put it in here just to put it in here? No, he's giving you instructions. You going about it the wrong way. Because you're dealing with people that don't know how to deal with righteous judgment anyway. The priest, this is what they do. Regular people, this is not what they do. Go ahead. Thus says Yahweh Elohim of Israel, I anointed you king over Israel, and I delivered you out of the hand of Saul. And I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your bosom, and gave you the house of Israel and of Yehuda. And if that had been too little, I would moreover have given unto you such and such things. Wherefore have you despised the commandment of Yah? to do evil in his sight. You have killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword and have taken his wife to be your wife and have slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house because you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Now, even in that, there is um, some grace of Yahweh because he's supposed to die. But you have to not only look at the situation of him uh, 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 supposed to uh, be killed here. You have to look at the situation of how Yahweh also dealt with um, this punishment. He says the sword shall never leave your house. But understand who the sword then devours and how it enters his house is, is, is quite interesting. Keep going. Thus says Yahweh. Behold, I will raise up evil against you out of your own house, uh -huh. and I'll take your wives before your eyes, 
and give them unto your neighbor, and he shall lie with your wives in the sight of this son. And we know we can read about uh, one of his own sons going into ten of his wives on the top of the hill so that all Israel could see. Yahweh said, you did it secretly? I'm going to do this before everybody. So we can tiptoe in the dark of the night. Yahweh going to give you judgment in the light of the sun on the top of a hill. Go ahead. For you did it secretly, but I'll do this thing before all Israel and before the sun. Right. He did it secretly. He sent somebody else to go uh, uh, and do this thing. He sent somebody else to put this man in the heat of the battle. Nobody knew except the little secret union. I was like, eh, don't worry about it. I'm going to take care of that. Go ahead. And Dawid said unto Nathan, I have sinned against Yahweh. And Nathan said unto Dawid, Yahweh also has put away your sin. You shall not die. Now, with all the foulness of what this is, as soon as it is revealed unto Dawid, he admits it. I, I, not us. We can have a videotape of us doing wrong. Well, I don't think that's me. Don't you have a birthmark on your back that's like the that? Ain't that your back right now? Huh? Wait a minute. Don't you have a tattoo to say your name? That's your name right there. How you spell your name? There it is right now. We still deny. Soon as it's brought to him, he deals with it. Go ahead. How be it? Because by this deed you have given great occasion to the enemies of Yahweh to blaspheme. Uh-huh. Now, this is the thing where you now cause me to serve with you in your sins. Now, because you carry the holy name of Israel, now you have given great occasion for other people to blaspheme. Do we consider that when we go off and do our little things that we want to do? Have you considered that those people are now going to blaspheme Yahweh? They ain't thinking about you. Who are you? What they thinking about? What are you supposed to be again? Okay, you are Israelite. And y'all worship Yahweh. And you just set that plot right there. They're watching somebody watch you scheming and plotting against somebody. Or they watching you do some dirt. Think about what they thinking about about your God. While you in the midst of the shindig partying. They are having nothing but disdain for your God. Not for you. Hmm. So this is what Yahweh about, huh? Right. Go ahead, bro. The child also that is born unto you shall surely die. And Nathan departed unto his house, and Yahweh struck the child that Uriah's wife bare unto Dawid, and it was very sick. Dawid therefore besought Elohim for the child, and Dawid fasted and went in and lay all night upon the earth. And the elders of his house arose and went to him to raise him up from the earth. But he would not, neither did he eat bread with them. And it came to pass on the seventh day that the child died. And the servants of Dawid feared to tell him that the child was dead. For they said, Behold, while the child was yet alive, we spake unto him, and he would not hearken unto our voice. How will he then vex himself if we tell him that the child is dead? But when Dawid saw that his servants whispered, Dawid perceived that the child was dead. Therefore Dawid said unto his servants, is the child dead? And they said, He's dead. Then Dawid arose from the earth, and washed, and anointed himself, and changed his apparel, and came into the house of Yahweh, and worshipped. And he came to his own house. And when he required, they set bread before him, and did eat. Then said his servants unto him, What thing is this that you have done? You did fast and weep for the child while it was alive, for when the child was dead, you did rise and eat bread. Normally, that's the other way around. Go ahead. And he said, While the child was yet alive, I fasted and wept. For I said, Who can tell whether Elohim will be gracious to me that the child may live? But now he is dead. Wherefore should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. And Dawid comforted Bathsheba his wife and went in unto her and lay with her, and she bare a son, and he called his name Slomo, and Yahweh loved him. Now, even after this deed, Yahweh has uh, 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 made sure that the sword will not depart out of Dawid's house because of this evil that he has done. 
but he has not taken his glory away from it, even though he shall be punished. Now, according to what's written, the adulterer and the adulteress is supposed to be put to death. So, Dawid's punishment is the sword shall not depart out of his house. But then look at what he does to Bathsheba. Go ahead. And he sent by the hand of Nathan the prophet, and he called his name Yedidiah because of Yahweh. That is Shlomo's real name, Yedidiah, uh, beloved of Yah. So after this deed, he then gives this woman a child, which is a strange situation. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 1. First Kings chapter one, and let's uh, uh, start that at verse fifteen. And Bathsheba went in unto the king into the chamber, and the king was very old. And Abishag the Shunammite ministered unto the king. Right. So this is in the latter days of 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 Dawi, but it's going to uh, uh, go over some things that were then given unto Bathsheba. Go ahead. And Bathsheba bowed and did obeisance unto the king. And the king said, What would you? And she said unto him, My master, you sweareth by Yahweh your Elohim unto your handmaid, uh -huh. saying, Assuredly, slow more your son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne. Now, assuredly, uh, uh, Solomon, your son, shall reign after me. Solomon was not the firstborn. And this is the woman that he took from another man, and then her first child dies. Yahweh then gives her a child who shall be the next king. It's at least eight, nine boys in front of him. Hmm. So why Yahweh turn around and bless her? Then she commit adultery. then we're going to start to see who Yahweh held responsible for this adultery. Go ahead. And now, behold, Adonai reigns. And now, my master, the king, you knoweth it not. And he hath slain oxen and fat cattle and sheep in abundance, and hath called all the sons of the king, and Abiathar the priest, and Joab the captain of the host. But Slomo, your servant, has he not called? And you, my master, O king, the eyes of all Israel upon you, that you should tell them who shall sit on the throne of my master, the king, after him. Right. Uh -uh. For, for those that like to gossip, at least learn how to do it. <laughs> you notice something? Um, how she uh, 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 comes in here? Didn't you swear by Yahweh your Elohim unto your handmaid, saying, Assuredly, Solomon your son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne? Verse 18. And now behold... Adonai reigned, and now my master the king, you know if it not. And he has slain oxen and, 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 and fat cattle and sheep in abundance. All right, she starts this with a question. Didn't you say such and such? Go ahead. You, know, you say you could have came in accusatory. Why is yeah, exactly. sitting on the throne when you said? It, it get, bruh. See, sometimes it ain't what you say, it's how you say it. Go ahead. Verse 21. Otherwise it shall come to pass, when my master the king shall sleep with his fathers, that I and my sons, and I and my son Slomo shall be counted offenders. Right. And she already done went through a lot. Said, if you don't fix this, I'm dead. Because they're going to kill who's supposed to be the rightful heir to the throne. Because he's going to constantly feel like he's going to question that rulership. So he's going to kill someone. Go ahead. And lo, while she yet talked with the king, Nathan the prophet also came in. Right. And this is something that they put together. Okay. So she going in first. Now here come the prophet. He already know the prophet ain't going to lie. Go ahead. And they told the king, saying, Behold, Nathan the prophet... And when he was coming before the king, he bowed himself before the king with his face to the ground. And Nathan said, 
My master, O king, have you said, Adonijah shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne? For he has gone down this day, and has slain oxen and fat cattle and sheep in abundance, and has called all the king's sons and the captains of the host, and Abiathar the priest, and, behold, they eat and drink before him, and say, Elohim save king Adonijah. But me, even me your servant, and Zadok the priest, and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, and your servant Slomo, has he not called? Right. All of the people that are within the court that, that you know to be uh, 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 faithful people in serving, none of those people have been called. Go ahead. Is this thing done by my master, the I, king? Did you see the question? She came in with a question. Now he's there with a question. Is this thing done by my master, the king? Then come in with a bunch of accusations. See, that's how we do. Go ahead. I mean, the first one he said, my master, have you said that I and I should reign? Right. They, they all questions. Have you uh -huh. said? Right. Because we could come in presumptuously and this man already set this up and get our hands handed to us. Mm hmm Go ahead. Is this thing done by my master, the king, and you have not showed it on to your servant? You see how they come? They already know he didn't do it. All right? But they're coming with some humbleness in how they're approaching this situation. Not just walking around accusing everybody. Is this thing done of you, old oh master? They didn't come around slinging a bunch of accusations. Remember the folk that ran up talking about they had done, that they was the one that killed Saul? Mm -hmm. They thought they were going to get a present. Hmm. That way said, I'm going to give you a present. Hmm. Cut them in half. Go ahead. Who should sit on the throne of my master, the king, after him? Verse 28. Then King Dawid answered and said, Call me Bathsheba. And she came in into the king's presence and stood before the king. And the king swore and said, As Yahweh lives, that has, re that has redeemed my soul out of all distress, even as I swear unto you by Yahweh Elohim of Israel. Saying, Even as I swear unto you by Yahweh Elohim of Israel. Go ahead. Saying, Assuredly, slow more your son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne in my stead. Even so will I certainly do this day. Now, you don't know if he told anybody else that. Like, who all has he said that to? And she like, look, you know, bro, you, you, you sick. Bro, you, 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 you might be on your last day. This promise you made me, I'm going to need you to tell somebody else. Because hmm. otherwise, it's just propaganda. If I say it, so you're going to have to tell somebody else what you told me. Go ahead. Then Bathsheba bowed with her face to the earth and did reverence to the king and said, Let my master, the king, that we live forever. Right, and she know he finna die. Learn something. Go ahead. And you see that word he keeps talking about reverence? Uh huh. Right. Go ahead. And King Dawid said, Call me Zadok the priest. Uh huh. See, now we're going to take care of this business officially. See, there's one thing about promises made in the dark, because you know, he could say, That was just pillow talk. You know, <laughs> you know, you say anything in pillow talk, you know what I'm saying? Now, this, this, got, this got to be official. This got to be somewhere else other than pillow talk. Go ahead. Call me Zadok the priest, and Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada. And they came before the king. The king also said unto them, Take with you the servants of your master, and cause Slomo my son to ride upon mine own mule, uh -huh. and bring him down to Gihon. And let Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet anoint him there king over Israel, and blow you with the trumpet, and say, Elohim save King Slomo. Then you shall come up after him, that he may come and sit up on my throne, for he shall be king in my stead. And I have anointed him to be ruler over Israel and over Yehuda. I have appointed him to be the ruler over Israel and over Yehuda. Now you gotta understand that the person that's ruling wanna rule until their very last day. So Dawid is pausing on all of this, but he's causing more problems by pausing. 
Because now other sons have, have jumped up in there and they say, hey, I got more, more right than, 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 than slow-mo. He way down the list. I got more right to the kingship than him. Yahweh didn't think so. Go ahead. And Benaiah, the son of Yehoiada, answered the king and said, Amen. Yahweh Elohim of my master, the king, say so too. As Yahweh has been with my master, the king, even so be he with slow-mo, and make his throne greater than the throne of my master, the king Dawid, of my master, king Dawid. So Zadok, the priest, and Nathan, the prophet, and Benaiah, the son of Yehoiada, and, the, and the Cherethites, and the Pelethites, went down, and called Slomo to ride upon King Dawid's mule and brought him to Gihon. And Zadok the priest took an horn of oil out of the tabernacle mm -hmm. and anointed Slomo. And they blew the trumpet, and all the people said, Elohim save King Slomo. Elohim save King Slomo. Now it is made official uh, uh, with uh, this thing. So now let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 22. Deuteronomy chapter 22, and let's read verses 22 through 30. Verse 22. If a, man, if a man be found laying with a woman married to an husband, then they shall both of them die. Both uh, of them. I, I, who, who, who's supposed to die? Both of them. Now, we already see foul situations in, in the New Testament where they said they caught this woman in the act of adultery in the very act, but they only brought the woman. The word of Yahweh say that if they committed adultery, they both supposed to die. So when we read this situation, then it gets kind of interesting. Not only did this woman not die, but her son gets to be the next king. So Yahweh felt some kind of way about what happened to her. Go ahead. Both the man that lay with the woman and the woman so shall you put away evil from Israel. Mm -hmm. If a damsel that is a virgin be betrothed to a husband, and a man find her in the city and lie with her, then you shall bring them both onto the gate of that city, and you shall stone them with stones that they die. The damsel, because she cried not. Right. The damsel, one of the things you find in verse 23, if a damsel that is a virgin be betrothed unto a husband that is engaged, and a man find her in the city, it is automatically assumed if... Uh, he found her in the city. She should have yelled if she said somebody uh, uh, forced her. Why ain't nobody hear you? I tell people it's kind of interesting when a, when a poor dude so-called rape a woman is at her place. When a rich dude rape a woman is at his hotel room at 4 a.m. Find that amazing. How did you get in there at 4 a.m.? We was just going to play Uno. <laughs> right. Read, man. Being in the city, and the man, because he has humbled his neighbor's wife, so you shall put away evil from among you. But if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field... In the field. So now they are away from the city. Go ahead. And the man force her and lie with her, then the man only shall... Then the man only that lay with her shall die. Right. It is automatically assumed. Now, here's, here's the problem with, with, with even that part of the law. It is assumed because they are far out. If she did holler, nobody would have heard her. That say to me as a brother, I ain't dealing with no woman in the country. I can't. I, no, no, we got to be in the city. So at least I see her the next day and she said, he took it. And I'll be like, no, no, I didn't. No, wait a minute. Wasn't nobody there. <laughs> now, say, now, now I'm in trouble because it's going to be assumed because no one was around. Pay attention. Hey, this is the same law you're going to be governed by. You're going to have kids. You're going to have to introduce and explain to your kids these things. Go ahead. But unto the damsel you shall do nothing. Uh-huh. There is in the damsel no sin worthy of death. For as when a man rise against his neighbor and slays him, even so is this matter. Uh-huh. For he found her in the field, and 
For he found her in the field, uh -huh. and the betrothed damsel cried, and there was none to save her. And there was none to save her. You see how that is automatically assumed in the word? So that automatically tells me, I, you know, you need to be talking to your boys. Hey, look here, man. You in the field. Don't, hey, bro. Mm -hmm. Hey, in the morning, that could go horribly wrong for you. Say, man, you are beautiful. Let's go to the city. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, bro. If a man find a damsel that is a virgin, which is not betrothed, and lay hold on her and lie with her, and they be found, then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father fifty shekels of silver, and she shall be his wife. Because he has humbled her, he may not put her away all his days. Uh huh. A man shall not take his father's wife, nor discover his father's skirts. All right. So then now we see this law. Let's go and deal with another one. Let's go to Numbers chapter 5. See, Yahweh knows how to deal with righteous judgment, and it's more than just the law. Righteous judgment is more than just the law. See, Yahweh deals with intent and everybody's intent. So Yahweh has not forgotten his law when Dawid has done this thing. So Yahweh is going to deal with him and he's going to have a long situation of judgment. Because he wasn't given death, it made the judgment actually spread out even further. Numbers 5, and uh, 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 we're going to start at verse 11. And Yahweh spake unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, If any man's wife go aside and commit a trespass against him, and a man lie with her carnally, and he be hid from the eyes of her husband, and be kept and be kept closed, and she be defiled, and there's no witness against her, neither she be taken with the manner. And the spirit of jealousy come upon him, and he be jealous of his wife, and she be defiled. Or if the spirit of jealousy come upon him, and he be jealous of his wife, and she be not defiled, then shall the man bring his wife unto the priest, and he shall bring her offering for her, uh -huh. the tenth part of an ephah of barley meal. He shall pour no oil upon it, nor put frankincense thereon, for it is an offering of jealousy, an offering of memorial, bringing lawlessness to remembrance. And the priest shall bring her near and set her before Yahweh. And the priest shall take holy water in an earthen vessel, and of the dust that is in the floor of the tabernacle the priest shall take, and put it into the water. And the priest shall set the woman before Yahweh, and uncover the woman's head. All right, uncover the woman's head. So it's automatically assumed that her head is going to be covered. Go ahead. And put the offering of memorial in her hands, which is the jealousy offering. And the priest shall, and the priest shall have in his hand the bitter water that causes the curse. And the priest shall charge her by an oath, and say unto the woman, If no man has lain with you, and if you have not gone aside to uncleanness with any other instead of your husband, be you free from this bitter water that causes the curse. Right. So then the bitter water is not going to do anything unto her if she has not gone aside unto another other than her husband. Go ahead. But if you have gone aside to another instead of your husband, and if you be defiled, and some man have lain with you beside your husband, then the priest shall charge the woman with an oath of cursing, and the priest shall say unto the woman, Yahweh make you a curse and an oath among your people, when Yahweh does make your thigh to rot and your belly to swell. Uh -huh. And this water that causes the curse shall go into your bowels, to make your belly to swell and your thigh to rot. And the woman shall say, Amen, Amen. And the priest shall write these curses in a book, and he shall blot them out with the bitter water. And he shall cause the woman to drink the bitter water that causes the curse. And the water that causes the curse shall enter into her and become bitter. Mm -hmm. Then the priest shall take the jealousy offering out of the woman's hand, and shall wave the offering before Yahweh and offer it upon the altar. And the priest shall take an handful of the offering, even the memorial thereof, and burn it upon the altar, and afterwards shall cause the woman to drink the water. And when he has made her to drink the water, then it shall come to pass that... If she be defiled and have done trespass against her husband. If she be defiled and have done trespass against her husband, go ahead. That the water that causes the curse shall enter into her and become bitter, and her belly shall swell 
and her thigh shall rot, and the woman shall be a curse among her people. Uh huh. And if the woman be not defiled, listen. But, and if the woman be not defiled, go ahead. But be clean, then she shall be free and shall conceive seed. Then she shall conceive seed. This is what's given unto her after this has been brought against her. Go ahead. This is the law of jealousies. When a wife goes aside to another instead of her husband and is defiled, or when the spirit of jealousy comes upon him and he be jealous over his wife, and shall set the woman before Yahweh, and the priest shall execute upon her all this law, then shall the man be guiltless from lawlessness, and this woman shall bear her lawlessness. Now, the whole thing about the law of jealousy or this jealousy offering was all about when uh, uh, she was not caught in the act of adultery and there was not a situation where he could a uh, 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 straight way prove that this was done so then you have this situation where if this happens she would receive this curse or either she would conceive seed if she was not guilty we have to then look at the situation of, uh, uh, of Bathsheba she committed adultery with Dawid she was supposed to be punished. We do not read any punishment. And then right after that, she conceived seed immediately. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 18. See, Yahweh knows how to do just judgment. And it's more than just what things are written in the law. See, the things that are spiritually discerned, naturally, they will not be figured out by carnal thought processes. 1 Samuel chapter 18, and let's read verses uh, uh, 6 through 9. And it came to pass as they came, when Dawid was returned from the slaughter of the Philistines, that the women came out of all cities of Israel, singing and dancing, to meet King Saul, with tabrets, with joy, with instruments of music. Right. Now, these are the women singers. And it came to pass that as they uh, uh, came, when Dawid was returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, and they said when Dawid was returned, okay, um, uh, that the women came out of all cities of Israel, singing and dancing to meet King Saul. All right, stop. When he brought the ark back, the singing and dancing, automatically, they met me with singing and dancing. How am I going to offer up to my Elohim less than what was given to me? Go ahead, bro. And also we see that the women also had instruments, so there were player of in instruments among the women. Very much so, my bro. And and and, and what? I, I'm sure we're going to get some coming on the internet. Uh, some brother going to be ticked off. Why you got them women in there singing? <laughs> right. Go ahead, bro. And the women answered one another as they played and said, Saul has slain his ten thousands. No, I'll read that again. And the women answered one another as they played and said, Saul has slain his thousands, and Dawid his ten thousands. So, they singing, and this lyric, uh, um, uh, uh, Saul don't like this lyric. He don't like this part of the song. Yeah, he's, he's fine with the women singles, you know. Uh, but this, this, uh, this lyric right here is not very pleasing um, to, 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 to Saul. Go ahead. And Saul was very angry, and the saying displeased him. And he said, they have ascribed unto Dawid ten thousands, and to me they have ascribed but thousands, and what can he have more but the kingdom? Now, this this is really uh, uh, ticking the, 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 the big warrior-like brother off that the little pretty boy who played music is, 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 is given the credit for killing tens of thousands, you know? And, 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 and like my brother was saying earlier, understand, Dawid was a player of music when he played his harp, his stringed instrument, it caused the evil spirit to depart from Saul. So think about the adversary of the devil as he's looking at this. 
Now, wait a minute. So the right music can make the evil spirit leave. Well, then the evil spirit went somewhere else then. So if I can control this music, then I can make demonic spirits enter into these individuals. We're not giving the devil the credit that he's due. Oh, he done sat right here and watched it. See, there's a reason when, when people are, are feeling sad, they go and put on sad songs so they can stay sad. The songs help them stay right there where they want to be. Brother want to be angry, you go and listen to some murder, death, kill. Go ahead. And so lied Dawid from that day and forward. All right. Uh, uh, and let us hear the conclusion of this matter. Let's go to Psalms chapter 66. So when you look at this situation, that this woman was then blessed with this child even after this happened. When you see the power that King Dawid had, that women sung when he returned, Yahweh then held him responsible. Yahweh felt like the woman did not have the power to even say no to him. This man is a star among Israel. Whatever he asked for, he get. And Yahweh even said, if you had wanted such and such, I would have given it to you. He is a star in Israel. Whatever he want, he can have. If he point at it, it's his. You, come here. Okay, where we going? Done deal. What time you want me to be there? Ain't nobody asking him no questions. And Yahweh held him responsible. So all the punishment went to him. Which is contrary to the law. The law says that everybody included supposed to be punished. Not one thing happened to her. Not one. Then her child becomes king. She didn't don't get slighted. It looked like she got stepped up. Yahweh knows how to do just judgment. So we, we, we need to be careful. At least we think we understand Yahweh's book the way he understands his book. You don't know his word like he know his word. That's our biggest mistake. When Yahweh made the promises with Israel, we didn't think we can do whatever we want to do because the promises have been made with us. He can't get rid of us. Then he get rid of us. And we're like, oh man, I must, I must didn't read that part. I don't know how he did that. Right. Stop thinking you know his word like he know his word. Psalm 66, and let's start there at verse 1. Make a joyful noise unto Elohim, all ye lands. Sing forth the honor of his name, make his praise glorious. Say unto Elohim, how terrible are you in your works. Through the greatness of your power shall your enemies submit themselves unto you. All the earth shall worship you and shall sing unto you. They shall sing to your name. Mm -hmm. Come and see the works of Elohim. He is terrible in his doing toward the children of men. He turned the sea into dry land. They went through the flood on foot. There did we rejoice in him. He rules by, the, he rules by his power forever. His eyes behold the nations. Let not the rebellious exalt themselves. O oh, bless our Elohim, you people, and make the voice of his praise to be heard. Right. And in all of those things, even when Dawi fell, he wrote songs about it to praise and glorify Yahweh. Admitting his fault and admitting the great things that Yahweh had done for him. See, when we fall, we hide it. When we come short, we don't want to talk about it. That we fall short, he write a song so everybody can sing about it. Because he then knows I am going to be glorified and, and in the eyes of my Elohim because I use my shortcomings to glorify my Elohim. So while we running, ducking, and hiding, He's standing on a hill proclaiming the greatness of Yahweh, his Elohim, that brought him out of his own sinful nature. Go ahead, brother. Which holds our soul in life and suffers not our feet to be moved. 
For you, O Elohim, has proved us. You have tried us as silver is tried. You brought us into the net. You laid affliction upon our loins. You have caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through the water, or through water. But you brought us out into a wealthy place. I will go into your house with burnt offerings. I will pay you my vows, which my lips have uttered, and my mouth have spoken when I was in trouble. This is the thing that we forget. See, a whole lot of things come out of our mouth when we get in trouble. Then we forget to pay them vows when the day go good. See, let us, let us enter into a, a, a problematic situation and we're making all kind of promises. Oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. As soon as we come out of it, and Yahweh bring you out of it for a reason. Say, no, 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 no. I'm going to see if they remember all them things that they let come out of their mouth when they was in trouble. Then we get comfortable and that selective amnesia starts to kick in. I say, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You made this promise when your soul was in trouble. Go ahead. I will offer unto you burnt sacrifices of fatlings with the incense of rams. I will offer bullocks with goats. Come in here, all you that fear Elohim, and I'll declare what he has done for my soul. I cried unto him with my mouth. And he was extolled with my tongue. He was called upon with my tongue. He was extolled with my tongue. I cried unto him with my mouth. I glorify the holy and divine name of Yahweh my Elohim. I'm going to sing about it. I'm going to praise him. It's going to come out of my mouth. Go ahead. If I regard lawlessness in my heart, the Adonai will not hear me. Uh-huh. So then I'm going to have to deal with this. And sometimes to be able to deal with what's in my own heart, I need to write it down. See, a whole lot of things come out of your mouth. And some of them things come out of your mouth, they are already forgotten by the time you finish saying them. But write some of it down. You might be surprised to go back and say, man, this is what was in my heart 30 days ago. And you might actually be able to deal with yourself. Because see, when you remember it yourself, you, you always remember yourself a lot more glorious than it actually is. Write it down. Then go back and look at it. 30 days later. Good. But verily, Elohim has heard me. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be Elohim, which has not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. All right. That's all that we're going to do for today uh remember the sabbath to keep it holy um uh, also those um um who um wanted a um uh, i'm sorry i didn't mention that earlier those who wanted a a tax record for offering please send a email to the uci.org at gmail.com um and just let me know that you wanted a tax record for uh on uh, the offerings if you have put your name on those things um, and all of the things that's done on the internet are automatically recorded. So uh, just send that email with your name. Government name, please. Mm -hmm. All right. I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to, you know, uh, uh, know that that stuff didn't record your Hebrew name. It recorded under your government name. So, uh, uh, um, but that's all that we're going to do for today. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.